Okay, so we have a few extra minutes today. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you, if you didn't complete it yet, go back and see if in the remaining time today you can't finish off the second part of the induction that we put up before, and I will scan back to it. This one. Do the general case, assume that this is true for some integer k, which is at least 2, and show that it's true for k plus 1. If you know what you're doing, keep your head down and keep working. But if you're lost, I'm going to do it up here. So again, this is only for those of you who are looking at this computation. Do you see what the first line is? The first line is the assumption of validity of the inequality when n is square root k. What did I do next? I added the term 1 over square root k plus 1 to both sides. That's what I need to do to make the left-hand side the term when n is 1 over, when n is k plus 1. Now, the question is, is that expression, square root k plus 1 over k plus 1, bigger than square root k plus 1? If it is, then I'm done. But I don't know, so I put a question mark on it. But that inequality is equivalent to the one below. What's the one below? What did I do there? Yes, yes, what? I just squared both sides. They're obviously positive numbers, so squaring both sides does not change whether the inequality is true or false. Okay, what did I do to go from the fourth line to the fifth line? I just subtracted k from both sides. Okay. Now, is that true? How would you do this? What would what would you do to continue? I want I want you to see what the next couple of lines would be. What steps would you take? Say it a little louder.
multiply the numerator and denominator on the left hand side by the square root. It might even be easier than that. Are you allowed to subtract one over k plus one? We could, but I. We're, we're, I'm willing at this time to make a step in which I, I drop the notion that the inequality is equivalent. I, I'm willing to take a weaker one. Is this true? Uh, I see. I now know exactly how I did this. I, I scanned out. And I put my hand somewhere up here. Oh, I, maybe I did. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> the engineer is happy because I, I, uh, I just figured out how to solve a problem. OK. Now, see my last line? Is my last line equivalent to the one immediately over it? No. But if it's true, if this one is true, then that one is true. It's a weaker statement, isn't it? Oh, and that's a. That, yeah. Yeah. So the last one implies the one in front of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this page off. I'll put it back on in just a second, because all I want is that top line. Now, I'm going to write something that's equivalent to that by squaring both sides. So if I square both sides, this becomes 4k over k plus 1, question mark 1. Now, these two are equivalent. But this one is stronger than that one. Is that true? Now multiply both sides by k plus 1. Subtract k. Is that true? Yes, because k is at least 2. That's true in spades. So the last line is true, therefore this line is true, therefore this line is true, therefore that line is true, and now, therefore this is true, therefore that's true, therefore that's true, done. If A, then B is fine as long as I can get A and I'm trying to get B. I, I'm not always required to stay with equivalent inequalities. You just can't use the inequalities backwards. You can't prove a stronger result with a weaker inequality. So induction and these proofs can, can get interesting along the way. OK, any questions about this? OK, I'm, I'm going to give you two extra minutes today. And probably at some point, I'll take them back. Yeah. So I'll see you next Tuesday.